Ali and Zara went skiing. Take a close look at both of them. Which girl is in danger? It's Zara. Look, there's an avalanche right behind her. Ryan and Jessica went ice skating. One of them is in danger. But who? Take a careful look at the pictures. It's Ryan. The ice where he stands is cracking. Two families, the Johnsons and the Smiths, went camping in the forest for a day to spend quality time together and build a snowman. Which family isn't being smart? Look, the Smiths stopped right under a dangerous tree. The branch can fall off. It's not the best spot. They should definitely move as soon as possible. Elizabeth and Kate are late for work, so they're driving above the speed limit. Which one of them puts herself and others in greater danger? Elizabeth, the road she's driving on is icy. Kate isn't being the most careful person as well, but at least the road she's driving is clean. Jane and Sadie were walking around town and found an appealing holiday tree with sweets on it. Of course, both decided to eat something off the tree. Which one of them isn't being smart? It's Jane. Look at the bird right next to the tree. It doesn't seem like whatever it ate was good. Even though Sadie does badly by eating sweets for decoration, at least it probably won't hurt her. Mrs. Bell has three daughters, Alyssa, Cassidy, and Poppy. She's about to have another girl. What do you think she'll name her? Stella, Wendy, or Haley? Mrs. Bell seems to choose names with double letters, so she'll probably name the girl Stella. Mrs. Jones is a math teacher who has three students she is teaching privately. One day, she walked into the classroom and saw that someone had broken a window. Of course, all of them denied doing it. Alice, Bea is lying. Bea, Cece is lying. Cece. Both Alice and Bea are lying. Only one of the students is telling the truth. Who? If Alice is the one to tell the truth, then Bea is lying and Cece is telling the truth about Alice lying, which is a contradiction. If Cece is telling the truth, then Alice is lying about Bea lying. So Bea is telling the truth, which is another contradiction. If Bea is telling the truth, then Cece is lying about both girls lying, because Bea is telling the truth. There's no contradiction, so Bea is the only one telling the truth. Mrs. Rowan is an owner of a successful startup, and she's looking for an intern to do data analysis. She's looking through resumes and she needs to decide whom to invite to an interview. Take a look at the interviews one by one and try to figure out which ones aren't fake. Here's the first one. What do you think? Should Mrs. Rowan invite this candidate for an interview? No, I wouldn't invite this candidate. The work is in data analysis, but she has a master's in American literature. These subjects aren't related. Okay, here's the next candidate. What do you think? Should Mrs. Rowan speak with her?
If what this woman is saying is true, then with her eight years of experience, she is definitely overqualified for the job. I wouldn't invite her. Okay, here's the next candidate. Do you think this one is worth the shot? Will you recommend inviting her for an interview? She seems to be a great candidate. Green light. See you at the interview. What about this young man? Should Mrs. Rowan give him a chance? He seems fine to me. Let's see what he has to say during the interview. Okay, here's the last candidate for today. What do you think? Should we give her a chance? Well, she sounds reasonable. Let's give her a chance, and Mrs. Rowan will see how she does during the interview. So, all in all, we invited three candidates. Good job! Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. That's never happened before. Instead, she found a witch's house, walked in, petted a cat, and asked the witch to take her home. The witch was busy making a new potion and needed Esme's help. She had to add seven ingredients, but she didn't remember the order. She remembered that herbs must be added third. Two steps before herbs, she must add spiders. Mouse hairs should be added last. Spiderweb goes right before mouse hairs. Grated stone is right after herbs. The magic powder goes sometime before the flower petals. What's uh -oh. the correct order? We know that herbs go third. If spiders are two steps before then, then they're the first ones. Mouse hairs are last, and the spider web is sixth. Grated stone is after herbs, so it's the fourth step. Only steps two and five are missing now. So if magic powder goes before flower petals, then the magic powder is step two, and flower petals are step five. Now, I have a brain teaser for you. Listen carefully. I look at you, you look at me. I raise my right, you raise your left. What am I? Of course, it's a reflection in a mirror. Yesterday was Lily's birthday and she turned 16. The next time it's her birthday, she'll turn 20. How is it possible? Lily was born on February 29th, which only happens once every four years. She'll get older, but her exact birthday will be only in four years when she turns 20. Okay, a bit of simple math now. In math class, 14 students are girls. Eight students have blonde hair. Two of the students are either girls or they are blonde. If five students in the class are blonde girls, how many students are in the class? Okay, so if there are five blonde girls and eight blonde people, it means that there are three blonde guys, plus possibly some more guys who aren't blonde. The riddle says that two people aren't girls and aren't blonde, so that's them. So, 14 girls plus three blonde guys plus two non-blonde guys make it 19 students in the math class. Luna wants to buy a new skateboard, and she'll need to save $120 for it. If she saves $10 a month, it'll take her 12 months to save $120, which is too long. If she saves $20 each month, it'll take her 6 months, but it's almost all her pocket money. 
If Luna saves $15 each month, how long will it take her to save $120? It'll take her eight months. Maddie cycles as a hobby, and she's competing in a cross-country race. Just before the finish line, she overtakes the person uh -oh. cycling third. What place did Maddie finish in? She overtook the third racer. She became third herself. I have two siblings, Emma and Maya. When I was 17, Emma was twice as old as Maya. When Emma was 23, Maya was twice as old as me. So how old was I when Maya was 10 years old? Eight years old. A group of high school students is going on a trip by bus and their teacher should arrange the seats. Uh -oh. She has the remaining five students she should arrange in five seats next to each other. Here's what the teacher knows. Joe and Dan are best friends, so they will make a lot of noise if they sit next to each other. Evie and Liana argue a lot, so they can't sit together as well. Beth refuses to sit next to the boys and doesn't like to take aisle seats or window seats. How can the seats be arranged? Since Beth doesn't like aisle and window seats, she will have two neighbors and both of them should be girls. We also can't leave two seats next to each other because Joe and Dan should be separated. So, Beth is sitting in the middle, Evie and Liana are on her left and right, and Joe and Dan are on the edges. Elsa was 17 years old the day before yesterday. Next year, she'll turn 20. Yay. How come? It's possible if the present day is January 1st, while Elsa's birthday is on the 31st of December. The day before yesterday, on December 30, she was still 17 years old. Yesterday, on the 31st of December, she turned 18. Thus, this year, Elsa turns 19 and next year, 20. Elsa and her sister Helga explore an old attic in their parents' house. It's very dark and dirty. After that, they go downstairs to have some lunch. Helga's face is all covered with dust, while Elsa's face is super clean. But still, only Elsa goes to the bathroom to wash her face. Why? Elsa noticed that her sister's face was dirty, so she thought her face must be dirty too. As for Helga, she saw that Elsa's face was clean and assumed that her own face was clean too. After lunch, Elsa and Helga go for a walk across an enchanted forest. They reach the riverbank, but the bridge is closed for repairs. The sisters notice two dwarfs fishing in a boat near the bridge. They agree to help the sisters, but their boat is very tiny. It can fit either one sister or two dwarfs. Luckily, they manage to solve this issue. Elsa and Helga cross the river on the same boat. How? Well, first of all, one of the dwarfs brought his fellow on the opposite bank. Then he headed back for the sisters alone. Helga got into the boat and crossed the river. She gave the second dwarf the boat, and he returned to the opposite bank. He picked his fellow dwarf and brought him to Helga. Then one of the dwarves swam to Elsa and passed the boat to her. She crossed the river and joined Helga, and finally, the second dwarf returned to his fellow. Helga and Elsa keep on walking and get lost in the forest. There are three roads to the nearest town. The first route is filled with mutant plants which feed on humans. 
The second path leads through an ice cave, with a hungry dragon frozen inside a huge ice cube. The third route leads through a village of fairies. Their magic makes humans lose their minds. Which way is safe? Well, the dragon is trapped inside the ice cube, so it's not that dangerous. Finally, the sisters reach the town. They're walking down the main street. Suddenly, someone throws an orange right at Helga's head. Elsa identifies the apartment from which the fruit fell out and goes there to complain. She knocks, and a young man opens the door right away. Elsa explains that her sister was hit by an orange that fell from his window. But the guy says, I was washing my dog when you knocked. Only me and my pet live here, so you confuse the floors. But Elsa didn't believe him. Why? According to the man, he was bathing his only pet. But the dog's hair is dry. Therefore, his story is fake. Elsa and Helga enter the local home decor shop. Helga takes a picture of her sister standing in front of the mirror. Can you spot anything odd in this photo? Take a closer look at the mirror. Elsa's hands are reflected wrong as well as the sale poster behind her. She must be a vampire. (laughs) Just kidding. The sisters continue exploring the shop. But suddenly, Elsa begins to scream and runs away. That's because one of these ladies is not alive. Can you guess who? The first woman is an ordinary human. There's a mirror behind her. The third lady has a painting of herself in the background. And the second lady, who's looking over her shoulder, is a phantom. Her reflection in the mirror doesn't match the reality. Elsa decides to hide in a building nearby. Surprise! It's a pet shop. Elsa wanders around it and spots one weird detail. Can you see it too? The turtle is wearing sunglasses. The locals tell Elsa and Helga about a creepy werewolf who has been scaring the citizens for several weeks. They only know that this werewolf is a lady, and she has a husband. He's the only person who can calm her down. Elsa finds three suspects who might be the werewolf's husband, but none of them admits it. Can you find him? He's the second guy. There are suspicious brownish hairs on his clothes, although his own hair is blonde. The next day, Helga has a birthday party. Elsa goes to the bakery to purchase a cake for her. She's late, so she rushes over and bumps into a waiter. Elsa hits her head and forgets what cake Helga asked her to buy. She remembers just three things. It shouldn't have any green elements, the cake frosting shouldn't include more than one color, and it must have at least one berry. Can you help Elsa find the correct cake? Elsa should take the fourth cake. It's a chocolate cheesecake, so it doesn't have anything green. The glazing is brown and is decorated with cherries. A perfect match. Elsa buys the cake and leaves. The bakery is located inside the highest tower in town. Elsa enters the elevator to go down, but she hits the wrong button and finds herself on the roof. She decides to take some pictures with the iconic huge clock installed at the top of this tower. Oops! Elsa drops her phone from the roof. She decides to leave, but someone has already locked the door. And the elevator won't work. So she's trapped on the roof. Luckily, Elsa can still change the time of the clock. What time should Elsa set on the clock to make someone notice and rescue her? If she sets 5.05 on the clock, it'll look like an SOS signal. Finally, Elsa escapes from the tower and heads to the parking lot. Here's her car! Can you figure out the number of the place where it's parked?
87. Elsa arrives home. Helga shows her vacation photos sent by her new boyfriend, Kyle. In this case, you can see Kyle, his friend Bob, and a humanoid robot, Neo. Neo is standing next to Bob. A person wearing the yellow mask is not a man. What color is Kyle's mask? According to the terms, only the third guy can be Kyle. So his mask is blue. The birthday party is going well. It's almost midnight, so Elsa goes to the kitchen and adds candles on the birthday cake. Suddenly, she remembers that the only lighter in the house is upstairs in her room. She leaves the cake at the table for a minute. Then Elsa returns and sees the cake smashed all over the floor. She questions three suspects. Lauren says, I was in the living room all night. I don't know who did it. Wendy says, I went outside to watch the full moon. It's so beautiful tonight. Kyle says, I was shooting a TikTok dance with Helga. Who ruined the cake? Wendy, take a look out the window. The moon is not full. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Busted. The next morning, Helga wakes up earlier than Elsa and checks her feed. Breaking news, a legendary thief ran away from a nearby prison and now creeps around the town. He's a talented shapeshifter, so no one knows for sure what he might look like. Suddenly, Helga hears someone ringing on the door. She opens and faces two guys who introduce themselves. Bob is a gardener from a nearby park, and Peter is a garbage man. Both guys want to use a bathroom, so they ask Helga to let them in. But only one of them is safe to invite over. Can you guess who? Bob is wearing clothes with red stains, but he's also holding a brush, so he was probably just painting a fence. Let's take a closer look at Peter's facial hair. One mustache has come unglued. It's fake. So he must be the runaway criminal from the news. You just entered a riddle-solving competition. The game show host shows you the first riddle you have to answer. Take a look at the image. Who do you think will be able to make it all the way across the line? Let's face it, it's the man on the left. Even though it looks like he's having a hard time carrying such heavy things, the weight is evenly distributed between his two hands, so he'll probably make it through without any problem. For your next challenge, the game show host shows you a picture of sinking boats. Which boat do you think will sink first? The first boat has two holes in it, but somehow it has way less water inside. The second boat only has one hole, but look at the amount of water that's gotten inside. It's definitely the second boat that's going to sink first. Since you passed the first two rounds, the third one gets a bit harder. Ken was riding on his rollerblades when he fell down and hurt his head. He woke up in the hospital, only to find that three Barbies were waiting for him. Take a look at the image. Can you figure out which Barbie is actually Ken's girlfriend? This is a tricky one. It can't be the third Barbie, because the real Barbie would never wink at Ken. It's usually him that does the flirty things. It's also not the second Barbie, because she would never put on makeup in front of him. So this leaves us with the first Barbie, who must be his girlfriend. The Finn is a famous hostel in Spain. It's especially famous for its fun showers. But hey, something doesn't look right in this image. Take a look and try to guess what it is. The woman on the right is squeezing a ketchup bottle instead of a shampoo bottle. That's definitely weird, huh? For the final rounds, the host picked out a few written riddles for you. 
The first one is, I speak without a mouth and hear without ears. Am I a microphone, a phone, or an echo? What would you say? The answer is echo, echo, echo. <laughs> I'm not alive, but I can grow. I don't have lungs, but I need air. What am I? A tree, fire, or clouds? The correct answer is fire. Way to go if you chose that. Now, Carol was invited to a Halloween party in an abandoned house. Her friends asked if she was up for a challenge, and she said yes. Soon enough, she was locked inside a room. In this room, there was one door and three light switches next to it. Behind the door was an empty closet with nothing but a light bulb. Her task was to figure out which switch controls the light bulb inside the closet. She could flip the switches in whatever way she wanted, but once she opened the door, she couldn't touch the switches anymore. After some minutes of thinking, gotcha. she was able to get it right. How did Carol do it? Okay, let's go step by step. She flipped switch number one and then waited a few minutes. She flipped it back to off and then immediately flipped switch number two. Then she opened the door and checked the light. The bulb was off, so she discovered that it wasn't switch number two that controlled the light. So she decided to touch the bulb to test if it was hot or cold. If the bulb had been cold, that would have meant that switch number three controlled it. But the bulb was hot, so that meant that switch number one controlled one. Way to go, Carol! To get back to the party, Carol uh -oh. had to solve another riddle. There were two hourglasses in front of her. One hourglass measures 7 minutes, and the other one measures 4 minutes. She needed to time 9 minutes using both hourglasses. How could she do it? First, she turned both hourglasses at the same time. By the time the 4-minute glass finished, there were still 3 minutes left on the other one. She flipped the 4-minute glass again. When the 7-minute glass was empty, there was 1 minute left on the other glass. And once the 4-minute glass emptied again, there was 1 minute's worth of sand at the bottom half of the 7-minute timer. She flipped it over again, so there was 1 minute worth of sand on the top of the glass. And when the 7-minute timer finally emptied again, 9 minutes elapsed in total. Anna sat down to watch her favorite TV show. She made some popcorn, turned on the TV, and nestled comfortably to binge-watch an entire season. Her cat Pepper sat down next to her. But after 5 minutes of screen time, Anna suddenly passed out. Look at the image. Can you guess what happened there? Anna's cat, Pepper, got scared with a loud thump that came from the TV. It jumped on top of Anna, and it scared the life out of her. That's why she passed out. Take a look at this scene. Who do you think has the best chance at survival? The two guys look pretty stuck in there. But the woman on the right might have a chance. The rope looks a bit loose around her body. She could try to shake it off and then use her free hands to untie her ankles. Bella landed in New York with a very ambitious career goal. But first thing she needed to do after arriving in the city was to find her apartment. There were many options to get from the airport to her apartment, but Bella decided to save money and go by bus. She had to purchase a ticket for $10, but a handsome guy popped out of nowhere and offered her a better deal. He said his plans had changed and he didn't need his bus ticket anymore. He offered to sell it to her for $6. Bella agreed and gave him the money, but it turned out to be a big mistake. Why? Uh -oh.
Take a look at the current date on the screen of the vending machine. And now, check the date on the ticket. The ticket the man sold Bella expired over a month ago. Finally, Bella managed to arrive in Manhattan and find her apartment. She was sharing a house with three other women. Bella introduced herself to them and went to settle in her room. She left her belongings on her bed and went to take a shower. When she stepped out of the shower, Bella noticed that her laptop was missing. She got furious and decided to interrogate all of her new roommates. Sarah said she had gone out to get a cup of coffee. She even told Bella to ask the doorman of their building since he had seen her leave. Kelly said that she had taken an afternoon nap with her headphones on. She said she hadn't heard or seen anything strange going on inside the apartment. Shannon said that she had gone to the building's rooftop to take some pictures of the city, since she was a professional photographer. Can you tell who's lying here? It's Shannon. Uh Uh-oh. If you notice the sign on the lobby, the building strictly prohibits people from accessing the rooftop. Alfred is a supermodel and he just landed his dream job. The biggest magazine in the country invited him to be on the cover of their latest issue. On the day of the photo shoot, he arrived early in the studio. Uh After finishing with hair and makeup, he looked in the mirror and screamed, Oh no! His skin was all red. It looked like he was having some serious allergic rash. He called all the assistants he had seen earlier in the day to interrogate them. Amy, the photographer's assistant, said she had been told Alfred was allergic to peanuts, so she made sure to only buy safe snacks. Bo, the makeup artist, said he hadn't touched Alfred's food. He said that right after he finished doing his job, he left for a coffee break. Mary, the cleaning lady, said that she knew how sensitive models could be. So that's why she had only used organic and hypoallergenic products to clean his dressing room. Alfred immediately knew who had contributed to his rash. Can you figure it out too? It was definitely Uh Bo. Sure, he didn't have access to Alfred's food, but he was the only one who touched Alfred's face that day. Liv was recording a dance routine for her social media page when a huge portal opened up and swallowed her whole. The next thing she knew, she was stuck inside a big cavern. Out of the blue, a great genie appeared. He told her that she would only be allowed to leave if she figured a way out by herself. As soon as he disappeared, she saw that there were three buttons on the wall. There was a red, a yellow, and a green button. On the floor, there was a note that read T-D-U-P-T, R-N-O-R, E-H-E-B, and S-S-T. She clicked one of the buttons and managed to open a door on the wall. Can you guess which button she chose? The red button. She unscrambled the words on the note and discovered it read, Press the red button. As soon as she pressed the button, Liv was transported into a virtual reality world. An artificial intelligence greeted her welcome and showed her three doors. The AI told her that only one door would lead to her freedom. It told her that behind the first door, there were hungry Pac-Men waiting for someone to walk inside. Behind the second door, there were cursed rollerblades. Once you put them on, you'd never be able to take them off. Plus, they had a will of their own and ended up taking you to some pretty dark places. Behind the last door, there were flying fuzzy creatures with laser eyes that would burn anything they came into contact with. Uh Which door do you think Liv should use to escape? Well, she should pick the second door. Because she wouldn't be obligated to put the pair of rollerblades on. She could walk past them and straight to her freedom. During the time she was gone, Liv noticed that someone had stolen her laptop. It had all her social media content on it. She figured it must have been one of her roommates, so she decided to take a look around the house and try to find it. Look at these images. The first room belongs to Jill. The second one belongs to Rachel. 
and the third one belongs to Amy. Can you figure out who stole Liv's laptop? If you look closely, Rachel's cat is sleeping on top of something that really looks like a laptop. It must have been her. Here we go! You just arrived home from a long day of work and tuned into the Riddle Show on your TV. Take a look at this scene. Who do you think has the best chance at survival? The two guys look pretty stuck in there, but the woman on the right might have a chance. The rope looks a bit loose around her body. She could try to shake it off and then use her free hands to untie her ankles. Which one of these definitely isn't human? It's the guy on the left. If you look closely, you'll see that the skin around his eyes is green. Take a look at these three guys. Which one of them is going on a date tonight? It must be the guy in the middle. He's holding a chocolate box in the shape of a heart. It's wrapped with a bow and everything. Alice, Beth, Cece, and Diana are standing in line to get a new video game. Alice is standing between Beth and Cece. Cece is in front of two people and Diana is standing in front of her. Can you say the exact order in which the girls are standing? Let's see, there are four of them. If Cece is standing in front of two people, and Diana is in front of her, then Diana is the first in line. Cece is the second one. Then Alice is standing between Beth and Cece. So the third person is Alice, and the last one is Beth. There are 10 students in the class. Six of them learn French. Oui, oui. <laughs> Seven of the students in the class learn Spanish. Olé. If every student learns at least one foreign language, how many students learn both French and Spanish? This is pretty simple math. 6 plus 7 equals 13. If there are only 10 students in the class, that means that 3 students are learning both French and Spanish. A police officer was following a robber around the city. Suddenly, the criminal rushed toward a hospital and disappeared. When the police officer entered the building, he saw three people. One of them must be the robber, who had dressed up pretending to be a doctor. Can you tell who the criminal is? It's the girl on the left. Look at her shoes. They're dirty. She probably didn't have time to clean or change them. Theo was getting ready for a job interview when the lights in his apartment went off. He was in a rush and didn't have time to wait for the lights to come back on. He was almost ready. He only needed to put on his socks and boots. Theo had socks of three different colors, black, white, and gray. He didn't care what color his socks would be, but he needed two socks of the same color. How many socks should Theo take to make sure there would be at least one matching pair? He just needs four socks. Even if the first three socks are different colors, the fourth sock will probably be either black, white, or gray, matching one of the others. Devin takes showers every day, but on even days of the month, he takes a long bath. During one year's time, how many baths does he take? Well, let's see. Except for February, all months have 30 or 31 days. 
in each month, there are usually 15 even days. For starters, we should multiply 15 by 11, which gives us 165 days. If we count February as having 14 even days, then the total number of baths Devon takes in a year is 179. This is Allison, and one of these three men is her boyfriend. Can you tell who? It's the guy on the left. Look, they have matching tattoos. Bella landed in New York with a very ambitious career goal. But first thing she needed to do after arriving in the city was to find her apartment. There were many options to get from the airport to her apartment, but Bella decided to save money and go by bus. She had to purchase a ticket for $10, but a handsome guy popped out of nowhere and offered her a better deal. He said his plans had changed and he didn't need his bus ticket anymore. He offered to sell it to her for $6. Bella agreed and gave him the money, but it turned out to be a big mistake. Why? Uh Take a look at the current date on the screen of the vending machine. And now, check the date on the ticket. The ticket the man sold Bella expired over a month ago. Finally, Bella managed to arrive in Manhattan and find her apartment. She was sharing a house with three other women. Bella introduced herself to them and went to settle in her room. She left her belongings on her bed and went to take a shower. When she stepped out of the shower, Bella noticed that her laptop was missing. She got furious and decided to interrogate all of her new roommates. Sarah said she had gone out to get a cup of coffee. She even told Bella to ask the doorman of their building since he had seen her leave. Kelly said that she had taken an afternoon nap with her headphones on. She said she hadn't heard or seen anything strange going on inside the apartment. Shannon said that she had gone to the building's rooftop to take some pictures of the city since she was a professional photographer. Can you tell who's lying here? It's Shannon. Uh-oh. If you notice the sign on the lobby, the building strictly prohibits people from accessing the rooftop. Henry was backpacking through Italy by himself. One evening, around 8 p.m., he got very hungry and decided to look for a cozy restaurant to have some dinner. He walked into a traditional restaurant, only to find a customer and a waiter arguing over something. The customer was saying that he had ordered tomato soup, while the waiter was saying that he had only ordered a hot chocolate. Henry saw something that immediately showed him who was lying. Can you find out too? The customer is lying. Behind him, there's a huge sign that says the restaurant only serves soup from 1 to 4 p.m. Since it was 8 p.m. in the evening, the waiter would have never accepted the customer's order in the first place. These are Julia and Maria. They are both very attractive young women who have no trouble finding boyfriends. Today is Valentine's Day, and they're both going out with their loved ones. One of them is currently dating three people, though so she's probably going to run from date to date. Just by looking at this image, can you tell which one it is? It's Maria, the one on the left. If you look at her workstation, she's got three presents lined up, one for each person she's currently seeing. Hey, who am I to judge? Dave, an archaeologist, traveled to Egypt on a very special mission. He spent days excavating ruins hidden under miles of sand, and the only thing he found was a coin marked 10 BCE. When he showed it to his colleagues, they told him the coin was a fake. Why? Uh Well, because the designation BCE didn't appear until the beginning of our era. Take a look at this image. Can you figure out which doctor is fake?
it's the guy on the left. He's got headphones wrapped around his neck. Something's not right there. Harry and Terry's girlfriends went away on a business trip for the weekend. During the whole time, the couples were texting and sending each other pictures. On Sunday morning, both girlfriends asked their boyfriends to send a selfie of where they were. Harry sent a selfie smiling inside the kitchen. Terry sent a selfie of himself in the bathroom. One of the girls knew immediately that their boyfriend was cheating. Who was the cheater and how did the girlfriend know? It was Harry. Look at the lipstick mark on the glass on the top of the kitchen counter. Uh Uh-oh. Erica wants to find her true love, so she's visiting a speed dating event. She talks to three strangers. Each guy tells her some brief facts about himself. Victor says... I'm an architect. I've recently built the largest skyscraper in this city, and now I want to settle down and find a beautiful wife. Jason says, I run my own bakery chain. I've never had any serious relationships because I was too busy with my work. And Edgar says, I recently got fired, but it's okay because my parents are billionaires. I'd like to find a soulmate to travel the world. Who Uh should Erica choose? Take a closer look at Victor. His teeth are too sharp. He doesn't eat or drink anything, and he doesn't have any shadow. It's not safe to date a vampire. As for Jason, he clearly wore a wedding ring. There's a tan line on his ring finger. Therefore, he's a liar. That's why Erica should choose Edgar. After the event, Erica enters her favorite Indian restaurant near her apartment. She makes an order, puts her bag on one of the tables, and goes to the restroom. After a couple of minutes, she returns and finds out that someone had stolen her bag. The waiter says, I saw someone with a neck tattoo running into the restaurant's second floor. Erica goes upstairs and finds three possible suspects. Can you spot the thief? This lady is the only one who has a big enough paper bag to hide Erica's bag. And there's also a wig inside her bag. The next day, Erica invites Edgar over for dinner. She has some candies in the kitchen. They look similar but have three different flavors. Three orange, two strawberry, and five grape candies. Suddenly, the lights turn off in the entire building. Now the kitchen is completely dark. How many candies must Erica take out to make sure she has at least one candy of each flavor? To figure out the minimal number of candies, subtract one from the smallest number and then add all the larger numbers to it. And you'll get nine. Today is Edgar and Erica's wedding day. Man, they move fast. In the morning, the bride is getting ready. First of all, she goes to the shower for 20 minutes. When she returns to her room, she finds out that someone had stained her wedding dress. Only the bridesmaids had access to this dress. So, Erica questions them. Lily says, In the last 20 minutes, I was chatting with your mom in the living room. She can confirm my words. Rosie says, I'm not proud of it, but I was in the kitchen secretly eating some snacks prepared for the wedding dinner. And Daisy says, I've been dealing with a flower shop. They delivered the wrong flowers. Can you guess who stained the dress? It was Rosie. There's the same mud under her shoes. After landing, Edgar and Erica take a taxi and go to their hotel. Suddenly, they see a family of ducks crossing the road. Erica takes a picture, but unfortunately, it's unfocused. Can you count the exact number of ducks?
Let's take a look at one duck at a time. We can see two beaks, so there's another duck behind the first one. And here we have two little ducks near the bigger one. And this duck is single. So far, the overall sum is six. This guy is not a duck, it's a goose. But there's one more duck hiding behind him. And three more over here. So the overall number is 10. Erica and Edgar arrive at their hotel. Four employees greet them in the lobby, but one of them is an imposter. Can you guess who? Take a look at the logo of this hotel. It's a lotus with six petals, but the logo on this lady's badge has a five petal lotus. Therefore, she's a fake employee. The hotel manager gives the guys a key to the best room for the newlyweds. They go to check out the room, but when they see the interior, they immediately oh, ask no. for another one. Why? There's a transparent lizard crawling along the curtains. This potted flower has teeth, and someone is clearly peeping at them through the eyes of this portrait on the wall. <laughs> 